this is my first one. Uh, well, thanks everyone. Uh, my name is Maria Pretzelis, and I'm going to talk a little bit about our work um, partnering with DMP Online about machine actionable DMPs and how we're using uh, machine actionable DMPs to network uh, research activities using identifiers and DMPs together. Um, so I am with the California Digital Library um, in the UC3 department. Um, so CDL is part of the University of California system. We work with all of the um, University of California campuses, but we also do a lot of work internationally with partners like DCC. So UC3 works in a few different areas. Uh, we do a lot of work in research data management, like the DMP tool. Um, we also do uh, work in data publication and data metrics with um, Dryad um, and make data count. We do a lot with persistent identifiers, digital preservation, and also data and software skills um, training uh, in the form of library carpentry. So DMP tool. Um, kind of fall, uh, fell under a similar trajectory as DMP online um, in terms of our history, um, which so I really found um, Kevin's overview of the history of DMP online super interesting uh, from Monday. Um, so we are going to be having our 10 year anniversary next year. Um, and DMP tool really uh, came about because of community interest in the project um, and because of a community need to support researchers who were being faced with having to create data management plans. Um, so partnering with the DMP online people is really sincerely one of my favorite parts. So I was just saying that partnering with DMP online is really wonderful and Magdalene just gave a perfect example. Um, we really do do very close collaboration with um, feature development um, done in parallel. And it's just been a, a real pleasure to, to work with that team. Um, and like Sarah was saying, um, you know, it really allows us to do a lot more innovative work than we would be able to do solo. So it's a great partnership. Um, one of our feet, uh, sort of focuses has been on creating next generation machine actionable data management plans. Um, and we do have an active NSF eager grant right now through uh, CDL that is allowing us to build some of these uh, new features. Um, Angelina, if you could go to the next slide. So I'm gonna get into how we're using the machine actionable DMPs and PIDs to connect and uh, research activities through um, networking these connections. So next slide, please. So just to back up, um, NSF has really been an important figure in the development of the DMP tool from the very beginning. Um, and they've also been lately really important in sort of pushing the community to adopt some important um, practices for managing research data they came out with a Dear Colleague letter in May of 2019 um, that encouraged researchers to adopt two very big important practices in our world, um, the use of persistent identifiers for data and the use of machine readable data management plans. So this was a big um, release for us and um, you can go to the next slide. Um, as part of that letter, we got uh, an additional grant from NSF to convene um, about 40 stakeholders, experts in the field of RDM from all sorts of different areas like um, libraries, IT, funders, researchers themselves, tool builders, came together and talked about these recommendations from NSF and talked about how could the different stakeholders um, adopt these within their institutions. So we just came out with a report. It's very short. I think it's about 10 pages. It's very action oriented, uh, really focusing on the specific stakeholder and what they can do to um, incorporate identifiers and machine actionable DMPs into their work and into their community. So I encourage you to take a look at it. It really kind of summarizes a lot of our thoughts around this very succinctly. Um, yep, next slide, please. So we're doing a lot of work around, obviously, around identifiers. And the reason we think identifiers are really key in this is that these, the use of identifiers within DMPs and the use of an identifier 
or DMPs allow us to create a link between the data management plan and all of the project output. And importantly, it allows us to use the existing infrastructure of identifiers and data sites so that we're able to facilitate these connections within the PID graph. We don't have to build a new system or build a new infrastructure. We're hooking into this existing infrastructure by using openly available, openly licensed identifiers. We go to the next slide. So Datasite is a sub-award with us on that eager grant that I mentioned. So we're working with them on a few um, specific things. Uh, first off, they are updating their metadata schema to provide support for data management plans, which may be called output management plans. We're still working on the terminology. So that's big um, in terms of our ability to really effectively have identifiers uh, for data management plans. We're also working with them to really demonstrate the connections that we can make visually um, between DMPs and project output. So we've put, we're building some really cool Jupyter notebooks so people can go in, play with DMPs that have identifiers and actually see visually what connections are made possible between the original DMPs and the project output. So we are going to talk a lot more about that project, give people insight into best practices for metadata corresponding to a DMP ID. We're going to show people how to use those Jupyter notebooks in January 2021, possibly at Pitapalooza. Um, yep, go to the next slide. And uh, just this, thank you. Uh, this is just one of those visualizations, kind of a sneak peek. Um, in the middle there is, this is looking at the specific DMP. So you can see all of the people corresponding to that DMP. These are connected through ORCID identifiers. You can see that organizations using ROARS, funders are using the, fund re the funder registry ID through Crossref. And then the important part here is the, well, it's all important, but the notable part here is the data sets and publications. So these are the eventual outputs that came out of this specific project. So you can see all of the data sets and publications associated with this data management plan. And all of these are linked using existing identifiers and related identifiers um, for the project. You can go to the next slide. So in order to kind of create and build on this ecosystem, we had to really focus on creating the ability to network DMPs and to add new features. And this is all done uh, in collaboration with uh, DMP Online and the DMP Roadmap code base. So we have added as uh, the core identifiers to make this possible. We built a new API that builds on that RDA common standard that Tomas just talked about. So that common standard was really, truly fundamental to almost everything that we've done. So we are deeply indebted to the community work that went into uh, putting that schema together. So you can export plans as RDA compliant JSON through the API, or you can do it on an individual basis uh, within the, the tool. You can just, you know, where you download to a PDF, um, you will be able to just download to JSON if you want to do so. I think most people will use the API, but if you just want to take a look quickly, you can also do it that way. You can go to the next slide. So next up, I know a lot of people are interested in kind of where we are with network DMPs, what things are coming. Uh, so we are really focused right now. Um, our developer on the DMP tool side, Brian Riley, is putting a lot of time currently into developing uh, more granular support for um, data set or, or output description. So right now, we know in a DMP, you're usually just doing a narrative description of uh, your data set. Um, and so what we've done is we are breaking that out into specific controlled vocabularies, um, say for the type of license and using identifiers for the repository that the researcher is going to deposit those data sets in so that we're able to better track outputs by having better, uh, more um, interoperable data describing them from the beginning. So we're working on that right now. Um, as part of that, we'll be adding additional um, identifiers. Um, and importantly, we're adding additional hooks into the existing PID ecosystem so we can track those outputs. 
So some uh, places that we need to work with are data repositories, publishers, and field stations. Which brings me to my last um, bit, talking about field stations. Um, we are working on several kind of real life projects that allow us to kind of test out some of the things that we're trying to build with um, machine actionable DMPs. So our Fair Island project is partnering with field stations, so very controlled environments um, where researchers um, have to work under what we are developing and intend to be optimal data policies. And we need to use machine actionable data management plans. So in this environment, we're able to really test out and prove out some of the things that we've all been working towards and building in an actual real life um, environment. If you go to the next slide. So our goals uh, for this project are, as I said, to test the effectiveness of these um, ideal um, open science policies to demonstrate the capabilities of the machine actionable data management plan, test out our APIs, test out our configurations, find gaps that you know, we didn't know existed, um, you know, really have a real life environment in order to see how all of these pieces um, come together and work. And to see what happens kind of downstream when you're working in this idealized environment. So our key areas of work with Fair Island are to have um, fair compliant data policies, to continue working on those machine actionable DMPs. We're integrating with external systems. So that's a great way to really test out our API, test out that common standard in an actual you know, working way, um, and to eventually expand the Fair Island model. Our partner with this project is the University of California natural reserve system. They manage all of the field stations run by the University of California. So that includes, I think it's like 60 or 70 field stations, a lot of field stations, primarily in California, but they have some internationally as well. So the scope of this is quite large. We recently hired um, a product manager for this role, Erin um, Robinson. She was the former executive director of ESIP. She's very knowledgeable, very experienced in this, and we are just thrilled to have her join us and kind of push this project forward. So I think that we'll have a lot more to share with you all, um, I think, in the coming year. Next slide, please. So our partners in this, as I mentioned, the UC Natural Reserve System, we're working with the Techeroa Society, so the first kind of primary field station we're working on with um, on this is the Techeroa uh, field station. It is a beautiful island in French Polynesia. Um, it's an atoll um, and uh, really just a very controlled, optimal uh, environment um, to test out some of this work. Of course, building on all the work that's done through RDA um, and all of this is um, going into roadmap and um, will be shared with the community. Next slide, please. So if you're interested in you know, following our work on machine actionable DMPs or networked DMPs, um, I blog about it on the DMP tool blog um, where I always um, post if we have a new big release. Um, I'd also, again, encourage you all to take a look at that report. When I'm done, I will put it in the chat um, and we'll share the slides so you can have a look at other things as well. And I think that was it. Yes, thank you Magdalena for driving.